Hi everyone, it's Ashley with Modern Gardener and we wanted to do a video on growing the perfect tomatoes, if you can, or at least trying to. This is the second part to a two-part series. The first part we talked to Wasatch Community Gardens Green Team Farm Director, James Loomis, about choosing starts and getting them in the ground. And this second part here, we're gonna to talk to Mary Beth Janrick about problems to look for during the season, issues you might have, diseases. So let's get into it. What are some of the most common tomato diseases that people see? Well, it's not just diseases. I mean, we have diseases, we have some pests, and I'll, I'll explain what some of those are. Um, but one of the most common problems that people face is simply lack of formation of the fruit. So they'll, they'll call our office, they'll call USU Extension, and they'll say, my blossoms are falling off my plant. And I'm, so without a blossom, you're not gonna get a fruit. That's called blossom drop. And that occurs when the temperatures are really high during okay. the day and high at night. What we recommend so that you can still get some fruit formation is to include some early maturing varieties. So you're gonna wanna look at days to maturity on a plant tag. Uh huh. So it'll say about how many days from the time you put it in the ground can you expect to start harvesting from that plant? Mm -hmm. So okay. try some early varieties like early Annie or Glacier or Oregon Spring, these things that will produce in 55 to 60 days. So mm -hmm. you're gonna get some early fruit set before it gets so hot that the pollen in the flowers become sterile and the mm -hmm. flowers fall off. Okay, gotcha. Some of the other common problems that people experience is cracking. So mm -hmm. you get this big, beautiful mm -hmm. tomato and it's doing really well and it's getting ripe you're getting ready to pick it and then it gets these huge cracks mm -hmm. on it. And sometimes like mine have even gotten a little bit of mold in there. Exactly. Yeah. So that's a watering issue. Oh, okay. So what happens is um, the skin can't grow as fast as oh. the flesh. And if you water too much, um, for example, if we get a rain mm -hmm. and you're watering, that's a flush of water and the flesh will grow faster than the skin can expand and your tomato will crack. Gotcha. There that makes are, total sense because those, I feel like those tomatoes that I've had that have cracked have been like super juicy. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if they're cracking, they probably aren't going to taste very good because you'll have a watered down flavor. You won't oh, have yeah. that intense tomato mm -hmm. flavor for that variety that you're looking for. Okay. So, Sun scald, that's not a disease either. It's either from over pruning or just from the tomato facing usually like a southwest direction and just getting beaten on, beaten okay. on by the sun all day. Okay. Blossom end rot. That is a problem related to the plant's inability to get the calcium out of the soil. Okay. So a lot of gardeners, you see it all over Facebook all the time. Oh, I'm gonna grind up some eggshells and throw them in the gardener, add blood, me uh, I'm sorry, add bone, bone meal. meal for calcium. Mm -hmm. That is not what we want to do. We have tons of calcium in our soil. Okay. It has to do with the fact that our soil is really, it tends to be heavy clay, but it's very alkaline. Mm -hmm. Alkalinity will bind up mm -hmm. that nutrient so that the plants can't access it. It's more common in paste or Roma type tomatoes than it is in other varieties of tomatoes. Okay. The best thing that we can do is to water consistently. So, if, if you're really having trouble with blossom end rot on your paste tomatoes, mm -hmm. consider growing a different type of tomato to use for canning or mm -hmm. for sauce or mm -hmm. salsa. Okay. But then, to get back to your original question, which was about diseases, we do have some. And just, again, like with humans, some diseases are fatal mm -hmm. to a tomato plant. For example, uh, there is a viral disease called curly top virus. It's actually spread by this little evil insect called okay. a, a beet leafhopper. But once the virus is inside the plant, the uh -huh. plant will die. Okay. It often happens early in the season. You may notice one of them just failing to thrive. The leaves curl up? The leaves will curl up. Mm -hmm. They'll be purple underneath the leaves. You'll start to see these little tomatoes turning ripe and they're super leathery and oh, awful tasting. Okay. Um, what you need to do with that plant is just pull the entire plant out of your garden oh. and dispose of it in the garbage, oh. not the trash. So okay. that's a sad... That's a fatal one. That's a fatal one. Dang. Another fatal okay. one is late blight, but we don't deal necessarily with a lot of late blight in Utah. Early blight uh, is more like having, um, I don't know, high cholesterol or something <laughs> as a human. So. It's not good, uh -huh. um, and it's gonna cost you some money to deal with it uh, because you're gonna have to get some product uh, uh -huh. certified for use in organic gardening to address it, but it's manageable. So it's not the end of the world for that plant. Um, early blight, the hallmark, is on the leaves, you'll see 
these little bullseye, like little concentric rings okay. that are brown huh. and they're encircled in yellow and eventually that leaf dies and it moves up the plant. Ooh, okay. But it can also affect the fruit itself. Okay. So there are lots of ways to address early blight. Okay. Um, you want to get your pruners and like a, a paper towel and a, a thing of like a bleach okay. um, or those just Lysol wipes. Oh, okay and you want to prune off all of the affected foliage, throw it away, and you want to clean your pruners in between every, uh, okay. with your wipe, in okay. between every cut, okay. certainly in between every plant okay. that you do. Oh, wow. And then okay. there are things that you can do like copper fungicide treatment. So it's like this blue liquid that you mix up and you spray okay. on the entire plant. It can really arrest the spread of early blight. Okay. So that is something that we see quite a bit in okay. Utah. Um, and well, how do you treat early blight? Like other than um, other than like once it's set in, but I mean pre like is it does it come from the soil or like? Um, it is a fungal. It's it's a it's okay. a fungal issue. So okay. again, proper plant spacing is okay, really gotcha. important. Okay. Uh, you don't want to crowd your tomato plants. You okay. will get. I'm not going to make any guarantees, but. I would say you're gonna get more fruit and better fruit from your plants and your plants will be healthier if you plant fewer plants farther apart than okay. if you try to cram in too many. Okay, gotcha, that's good to know. You actually did have a class called Growing Great Tomatoes. Growing Great Tomatoes. So we actually have a whole tomato curriculum Okay. Uh, with at least five classes every year. This is a lot of really awesome, great material and you're sharing some of the photos with us on, on this video. Is this, this is available on your website or? Um, it's not. So um, this is just course material that we share with students who register for the course and come and, gotcha. and take the course. Okay. So we encourage people to do that. We do yeah. have um, scholarships available for low income individuals and the applications oh. on our website. Okay. So cool. if you go to wasatchgardens.org slash workshops, there is a list of all the classes that we offer and the um, application, application for, for scholarships. Oh, that's so great. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to watch more Modern Gardener, subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on notifications, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram.